First things first, this video will probably piss off a lot of people. I thought twice about making it, knowing that I'm probably gonna get a lot of backlash, especially from those that own the cars that are featured in this video. I know this because on one of my most popular videos where I bashed other cars, I got the most dislikes I've ever received on any one of my videos. Real quick guys, before the video begins, I wanted to update you guys that have been asking me when am I planning to mod my BMW 335i. Well, if everything goes as planned, I'm going to start modding it this January of 2019. I should have a video out soon breaking down some of the mods I'll be adding to the 335i, so make sure to subscribe, that way you don't miss it. That said, now, let's begin. The first car is a Toyota Prius. I'm almost positive most of you were expecting this car to be included, so I decided to not keep you guys waiting and get this car out the way. This has to be the most hated vehicle among car enthusiasts, with the most obvious reason being, well, that it's ugly. Sure, you can make the argument that there are other uglier cars out there, but see, auto manufacturers probably try to make those cars look pretty or unique and ultimately failed. The Prius on the other hand, it looks like Toyota intentionally tried to make it look ugly. I will say this though, the new ones do look slightly better. Keyword, slightly. The Prius also carries an image or stereotype that is considered negative by most people. People driving them typically have their nose up high and look down at every V8 car and truck driver as if they are superior because they are, quote, saving the planet. Saving the planet, you say? Hmm. Hybrids such as the Prius have one big issue, and that is their batteries. Creating a Prius actually creates much more emissions than, let's say, a traditional gasoline vehicle, and it'll take the vehicle's lifetime to make up for it. And then there's the rising question of how are we going to handle battery waste problems in the future, with the amount of hybrids and electric vehicles increasing. In short, the Toyota Prius is environmentally costly. If you want to go green, a well-maintained used car is technically the greenest option. That's if you really care about the environment. I don't know about you, but I'd be embarrassed to drive a Prius. It lacks in style, excitement, it's not the greenest option available, Jeremy Clarkson bashed it on Top Gear, and oh yeah, it's slow. The next car is a Smart for Two. Before anyone decides to question how popular this car is, it sold nearly 2 million units since they launched, which is absolutely mind blowing. I'm not sure why anyone would want a car of that size. I can somewhat see it being beneficial in European countries that have congested cities and super tight roads, but owning one in the US seems pointless and straight up embarrassing. Sure, a smart car can be a huge plus in the fuel efficiency department or when it comes to maneuverability, especially when parallel parking in small spaces, but it's hard to ignore the negatives of owning one. Accidents in such a small vehicle can be scary. Naturally, larger vehicles from around the same era are safer and much harder to get tossed around. The size of the smart car can easily be overlooked on the road, ending up in other drivers' blind spots. Its small form factor makes it challenging to drive on major freeways as they could easily be unbalanced on high speeds, especially on very windy days. I remember once seeing a smart car nearly getting blown off a bridge when I was heading over to the beach. And if I haven't said enough negative things about the Smart for Two, here's more. It only seats two skinny passengers, has extremely limited cargo room, it handles terribly around corners, the automatic transmission offered in older gas models can be jerky at times, it has slow acceleration, lacks durability and versatility, and new electric models are overpriced in my opinion. But hey, if you're looking for a small vehicle that can perform a U-turn in one lane and can squeeze into almost any obstacle, then go ahead and purchase one. I'll tell you this, you won't catch me dead in one. No pun intended. The third car you should be embarrassed to drive is a Nissan Cube. While it wasn't widely popular here in the US, it was a major hit in Japan throughout the years. In fact, it was the top selling car in Japan at one point. You might get away with driving the Cube outside of the United States since other countries are typically much more welcoming to different designs. But if you drive it here in America, expect to get weird looks from others. Not sure what Nissan was thinking when designing the Cube. It honestly looks like a car that stays as a concept and never really makes it into market. But this one managed to sneak its way out somehow. The biggest design feature that probably bugs people the most is the Cube's asymmetrical rear glass. It's almost impossible not to comment on its rear design when seeing it on the road. That and its boxy shape. Sometimes I wonder if aerodynamics was even a consideration when they came up with the design. And how can I leave out the terrible transmission it carries? Nissan's famously bad CVT transmission. A car like this that offers lots of cabin room, private back seats good for extracurricular activities, and quirky design really shines in a country like Japan. But in a country like the US where most Americans react negatively when an automaker tries to design something outside of the box, owning a cube will make you a laughing stock, especially among automotive enthusiasts. The fourth car is a PT Cruiser, or as some people call it, the PT Loser. I've yet to meet anyone that speaks positive about this car. Crazy because this car was a sensation back when it first came out, selling nearly 145,000 units back in 2001 alone. The design was considered unique by many, mainly because of its 1930s inspired retro looks. People thought they were cool, and believe it or not, were extremely hard to find in dealership parking lots since they were selling so quickly. Fast forward to 
featured today and they are one of the most hated cars that exist. It's featured on nearly all top 10 lists of worst cars. There is even an article on the PT Cruiser by the New York Times titled From Hero to Zero. The PT Cruiser definitely lost its lust over the years mainly because it remained untouched even 9 years later. The only major change to it was around 2005 when they added a convertible model which made the car look worse in my opinion. As better cars were starting to come out the outdated look of the PT Cruiser was becoming more obvious even though it looks like quite the practical vehicle it really isn't especially in today's standard. There is not enough room inside which is no surprise since it uses the same platform as the Dodge Neon. I guess you can call it a hatchback Neon and I'm sure no one wants to own a hatchback Neon. Then there is the below average fuel efficiency that quite frankly is unacceptable for a car such as this one. 18 miles per gallon city and 24 miles per gallon highway just isn't good. And the biggest reason most people tend to avoid purchasing a PT Cruiser is because of all the reports mentioned in its poor reliability. Some common reported issues are the engine shutting off while driving, countless electrical issues and the dashboard cracking. Funny how this car received so much positive attention in the past because of its exterior design and now it receives negative attention especially when people decide to make him look like this. The fifth and final embarrassing car on the list is the Mitsubishi Mirage. Technically this isn't a very popular car, but hear me out. It's one of Mitsubishi's top selling cars because of its low new car price point. It starts at just under $14,000 for a 2019 model. For that price, you're definitely going to sacrifice some quality and performance. It carries a 1.2 liter 3 cylinder engine that produces only 78 horsepower and 74 pound feet of torque. Definitely not numbers you want to talk about when around other people, unless of course you want to be embarrassed. Other than maybe good gas mileage, driving the Mirage on the road just isn't a good experience. The three cylinder engine idles hard, making most rides noisy and distracting, the slow acceleration makes it tough to merge into major freeways, and fun factor in general doesn't exist. It's obvious that the Mirage only really has one purpose and that is to get you from point A to point B. A bare bones commuter car. Pretty much the perfect car to get all your car enthusiast friends to hate you. I get it though, the car isn't supposed to be sporty, it's not supposed to have the best luxury features and it's not supposed to be fun to drive. The Mirage is for those that don't care about a car having a soul, for those on a tight budget and that ultimately want a new car with a good warranty. That said, you should still be embarrassed to drive a Mirage. Alright guys, now it's your turn. Let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on the cars I featured on this list. Feel free to blow me up as well if you disagreed with my picks. Also make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe with notifications on that way you don't miss out on my next video. Like always thanks for watching till next time.